Business editor Richard Southern joins us now. Now, Richard, would you line up for hours for fast food? Because that's exactly what happened in Mississauga this morning. I might, to be perfectly honest with you, Christina. And uh, I guess, yeah, I'm not alone. Uh, so this, the second GTA Jollibee's opened today. This is the ultra popular Filipino fast food chain. They have a location at the 401 in Kennedy. It's been open since April and they line up every day for it. This is the newest one. It's at Seafood City in Mississauga. And sure enough, people were there all night to get in. Take a look. I'm from Philippines, so it's nice uh, having something from home here. Uh, and, and I hope, from what I heard from Scarborough, it's uh, very nostalgic. It has the same taste. We already like planned everything out. <laughs> Two buckets. We, we're trying to max it out as much as possible because there's a limit, right? Oh, so, so you're gonna buy your sixty dollars? Yes. We just saw a lot of people eat it online, so we want to see what's all about. Yeah, like I've never tried it before or anything. Okay. I just said, I've heard are good reviews. Our first customer came in at 10:30 last night. Yeah. And, and we have now. Uh, a two-hour wait uh, starting at 7 in the morning. So it's just been amazing, really. Okay, I'm just definitely going to have to try that. Would you know what? The menu is very different than your typical fast food. They have uh, garlic noodles with shrimp and egg, and they uh, they have as well spaghetti that they're very famous for, and a mm. sweet sauce with hot dogs. It's, it sounds bizarre. I actually had a, try, a chance to try it here on City News last month. Not that bad, quite frankly, but a lot of people waiting day in and day out for Jollibee's. Might not be worth the 12-hour wait. Maybe not 12 hours, but yeah, it's not that bad. Trade wars don't get much bigger than this. Trump is threatening to slap tariffs on all Chinese goods coming to America. Yeah, he had an interview today, and the U.S. president says, I'm ready to go uh, with tariffs of, on $500 billion of Chinese imports, and that would include all the imports from China going into the United States. Trump says in the interview, quote, I'm not doing this for politics. I'm doing it for, because it's the right thing for our country. He says we've been ripped off by China, says he doesn't worry about the stock market falling on this, which it did today. The Dow lower, the TSX down 100 points. Trade worry, Christina, continues to be top of mind for investors these days. It's big news from Aeroplan. The points program is starting its own airline? Unbelievable. Now, and they're doing this, Christina, because it was announced last year that Air Canada is breaking away from Aeroplan. So they've lost their biggest airline. What are they going to do to survive? They're going to start their own charter airline. They're talking to airlines about leasing some small body planes. I had a chance to talk to Jeremy Rabe, the CEO of Aeroplan. You know, we're going to be able to fly daily charters, uh, scheduled charters, um, which will be available for our members to redeem their miles. So these charter flights that Aeroplan will be doing, there will be no paid tickets on these flights, right? These are all reward flights. We will offer the ability to also buy those uh, tickets uh, through Aeroplan.com. Uh, if you do that, then you'll be actually be able to earn Aeroplan miles for, for purchasing that flight. Now, your airline will only go to the U.S. and to the Caribbean. What about those that want to go to Europe on points? What we're going to do is we're going to uh, also do some bulk uh, purchasing. It's called it's called like a hard block purchase, where we'll actually buy a part of the plane, um, not not the entire plane, but a part of the plane. Uh, we will prepay for that inventory uh, to the airline, and, and that allows us to get a much better discount than you'd be able to get otherwise. So, Christina, they're basically fighting for their survival, uh, going to lose, of course, Air Canada. And uh, stock in the company on all this news today was up almost 20% on Bay Street. It's a pretty interesting concept. Hopefully they don't pay their staff in points and actually use cash. <laughs> Rolls Royce developing tiny cockroach robots to crawl in and fix airplane engines? Creepy. Uh, but that's exactly what they're doing. Rolls Royce teaming up with uh, robotics experts at Harvard to come up with uh, these little critters. And what they're going to do is they're going to scutter in, crawl in to an aircraft engine to inspect it for damage and also fix some things. They can carry dirt out of the inside of the engine, places where humans can't easily get to. The miniature technology can improve the way maintenance is carried out by speeding up in, in, in inspections and also prevent uh, engineers having to remove the whole engine. No schedule in place for when they're going to be put into place, but uh, Rolls Royce contends cockroaches, robotic ones, they're coming to an engine near you, Christina. Well, very cool. Cool. Still a little bit creepy. <laughs> Keep them away from us. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Starbucks opening its very first ever singing store. Tell us about that, Richard. Signing store is actually what they're, they're calling it, Christina, and it's designed with the deaf community in mind, and it's located in Washington, D.C. Uh, they're going to hire 20 people who are proficient in American Sign Language, and the store's baristas, uh, those uh, that uh, 
can hear will have a, uh, a sign on them and uh, these aprons indicating that they're fluent in American Sign Language. Starbucks will also incorporate different aspects into the design. Uh, features will include an open environment for ease of visual communication as well as low glare reflective surfaces. Very interesting concept. A good one, I think, Christina. A very good one. Now, Apollo 11 touched down on the moon 49 years ago today. Richard, you're looking at some of the more interesting items from the mission that have been sold for big money. Yeah, people paying big dollars still for things that flew on that mission. First off, the most expensive, a moon rock bag uh, that Neil Armstrong used. 1.8 million this sold for, Christine. It actually still had moon dust in it. Uh, next up, Buzz Aldrin's earpiece that he wore on the moon sold for 35 thousand bucks. Um, Buzz Aldrin's handwritten Bible note, this was controversial, sold for 180,000. He wanted to read this verse when he was on the moon, but they wouldn't let him. There was a bit of a controversy. Uh, the command module skin fragment, they took a bit of that little foil that was on the, uh, the lander, and uh, they put that up for auction as well. That brought in $2,000. And finally, how would you like Buzz Aldrin's toothbrush that he used on the moon? 22700 bucks for that. I actually bought you that. I'm going to give you that for Christmas, Christina. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's better than the earpiece. <laughs>